Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how I convert this box elder log into at least one bowl. First up, uh, I look at the end of the log and I see there's, probably you have difficulty in seeing it, there's a, a small split from the pith, which is there going in that direction. Uh, there's a bit of a knot or something there which uh, I don't think will be an issue. Um, the branch here comes through to about there. Well, the first thing that we'll have an, actually have a look at the uh, other end of the log first. Um, the other end, the end we've just looked at, was sawn uh, about four hours ago, so that's a nice fresh surface. This uh, was clearly um, sawn when the tree was taken down uh, about three or four weeks ago, so it's much darker, and it's also started developing a number of cracks. So there are lots of little micro splits all the way around there and there's a major split, major, it's not it's only about that long at the moment and there's another one in that direction. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is, uh, is cut the branch off and that will give me a flat surface pretty well at right angles to that which means I can then put it through the saw and cut the log in half along the line of the split. So, push that through now. Doing it this way, I've got the, uh, I can see the line of the split here, so at least I can get the, uh, the flat surface I'm about to cut pretty much at right angles um, to the split, which is where I want it. This is a half inch blade because uh, I'm too lazy to change over to the 20 mil made which, uh, blade which would do a much better job um, and it is inclined to wander just a little bit but I've got my flat surface that can go over and so now it's a question of lining up the split which is there with the split at this end which I notice the angle of the split at this end is slightly different. Um, so we'll deal with that when we come to it. Um, so I'm basically going to take a line through here. here is that um, the set is with that knot with the branch uh, there's a feather figure there um, that I got it pretty well along the pith which is a good thing um, what is a wee bit irritating but not a problem is that the split in the middle stops just there so that means I'm going to have to lower the top of that at the other end I missed you know, there's no split so that's good um, but because this has lots of little small splits, I'm going to cut the end off that uh, bit of the log and um, just see what other, how far the splits go, basically. And I'll do the same with the other half. And uh, then having got the two halves done, um, I'm going to cut a little, uh, just a little flat area off so that when I turn it over and take a disc out of it, um, it's going to sit firm on the table. So the first thing is to take a little cut off, uh, a slither off.
So that's solid. Um, and the little splits which I can see here don't go through. Good. I've got enough of a flat there that I can push that through and get another flat. And So it doesn't have a foot brake on it, so that's the way I stopped the blade. Now, I've got uh, a bit of colour here which I will lose, um, and I've got the branch, um, the, the heartwood from the branch coming in, and I suspect I'll lose that as well, and I'll probably lose most of the figure. But, there we go. Over there, and I'll come over this. Just make sure there aren't any little splits at the end. Doesn't matter which side I go, really, because the narrowest part of the log is here. I'll just put it much in the middle. Dividers have just snuck on a little something there, so that look, just looks like the tail end of a knot. I don't think it'll be a problem. So we'll cut this and uh, into a disc, and so there we go. And I'll rather have this one. This bowl is going to the people who donated the log to the ACT Woodcraft Guild, so um, we'll make them a bigger bowl rather than a smaller one. Okay, so looking okay, so we now go to the lathe. So to drill a hole um, with the drill, when it goes round, you can see some lines on, so I know roughly how deep I'm going. And when I got to the lathe, it got to the lathe, I realized it was silly not to cut out another blank while I was at it, and so I have two. And at this stage, I'm only going to rough out these two bowls, and then I'll come back in another um, another day or so when the surfaces of the uh, the blanks have just dried out a bit.
Now I don't need all that screw with the three in one Vic Mark chuck. Separate video on how to do that. Perfectly safe for you people who worry about it. And I'm going to use a, uh, a half inch spindle guard to rough this down. the corner off quickly so that uh, then the, the blanks more unbalanced I can spin it a bit faster. sooner you can get a foot on it the better then if it does spin on the screw at least you've got something to grip the blank by now there's bark there so we'll take that off bit of bark there it's not too bad all right we'll come in from the top and i can see there's a a hole with a piss There's a, uh, a split from the pith there, so I'm going to lose that much off the top. And only on one side, so I could kind of shift the whole thing sideways between centres. Probably not worth the effort. And so we're going to get a slightly smaller foot. This is going to be a round bottom bowl, so just get rid of this. Down a bit. Just make sure I haven't got that too small for the chuck. Good. And I might as well take off the Pith now, so you can kind of do it later. Now, do I want to nest out the inside? And uh, the answer is. Probably yes. So we'll just broaden the view so you can see what happens from my end. Uh, you can't really see what's happening down inside. I'm using uh, an original uh, Stuart system slicer from the early 1980s in a Sorby handle. Sorby do make one of these. Uh, a slightly thicker end, so that's why I prefer this one. And I want the rest just to go down a fraction so the tool's kept horizontal and cutting at centre. And I'm aiming for a point just above centre. I'm 
making two cuts in order to accommodate the width of the tool, and that means that there's a thin band which is about to fly out. There we go. widen the curve a little bit in that direction to accommodate the, the width of the tool. very straight grain, it'll break nice and clean, so this must be a little bit wavy in there. Right, so that means I've got another bowl out of the inside, uh, and that hairy grain means there might even be a bit of figure in there as well. Uh, it's probably not worth it because I've got the knot to get rid of first. That needs to be a little bit square. So there's a bit which flew out from the inside. Just do the same with the other blank. Oh, the building shaking when I turn that on because the uh, bench at the back of the lathe is connected to the wall. And just get rid of the un uneven stuff at the bottom. It's going to look better because it's got a bit more figure. I'm going to lose less off the rim. Right, I'm getting that off. 
turn it around and rough hollow it. I forgot about nesting the second bowl. Um, so I've just done that and just true up this. All I need is a foot for the uh, chuck to grab. So this is pretty well roughed out, so it just needs um, the wall evening up, so it's it's going to dry hopefully more evenly. A uh, half inch bowl gouge. So I can expand these jaws inside at a later date or one of the other sets of jaws, maybe out there would be better. Just put a few in so I can grab something. And we'll be back to that in two or three days time. Sometimes the jaws might dig in a little bit further into one part of the foot than another, but that was just me careless putting it in to the jaws. Uh, this is still fairly wet, moisture is even coming out, and we'll just do these two little ones, so they'll go on the inside jaws. This is when the step jaws are really useful and why I designed the set originally, um, was so that I could uh, grip a, a series of shapes different size feet when I was roughing out bowls. We get off with a slightly smaller gouge here. Use the three eighths.
take the top bit off first. So that's all that's happened to these bolts for the moment and uh, we'll be back looking at them uh, in another three or four days.